I just want to give you a short admonition before we begin. Whether you're pre-trip, mid-trip, or post-trip, you are welcome in our church. Eschatology is nothing to divide over among saints unless you're denying the literal return of Jesus Christ. That would be heretical. But if you don't have my understanding on the timing of the rapture or we disagree on that, that's nothing to divide over. But we do need to be ready to change our minds and come into accord with God's word. And so that's what I'd like to do if you've had different kinds of teaching on this topic, I just want to look at a simple, literal, chronological reading of the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, and also Revelation 6, which I covered in the previous video called Opening the Six Seals of Revelation. So I encourage you to, to uh, go back before you watch this video and watch the opening of the six seals. You could search that on my channel. I'll link it in the description. This is a companion video to that teaching. And then I'll be doing a third video on the wrath of God and the trumpet and vile judgments. All right, so with that, let's begin. Matthew 24, 29 through 31 is the main passage that I'd like to cover today. And I'll begin there immediately in verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so there we have the rapture okay we have the gathering together of his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. We have the sun and the moon being darkened right before that. And then you have Jesus returning. You'll see the sign of the son of man and then the rapture. Okay, so that's that's the moment of the rapture. And this is covered in the Olivet Discourse. And I like to look at Matthew 24 when I look at the Olivet Discourse because I'm just more familiar with that. But Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 is the Olivet Discourse. What is the Olivet Discourse? This is when Jesus was still here on earth and he was teaching his disciples about the end times. And in Matthew 24, they directly ask him, they say, it says in Matthew 24, this is Jesus with his disciples on the Mount of Olives. And it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. So in the very beginning of the Olivet Discourse, the disciples ask Jesus directly, what is the sign of your coming? When shall the end times take place? What's going to happen during that time? Now, I covered the opening of the six seals in the book of Revelation chapter 6 in the last video, and I do encourage you to go back as a precursor to this teaching. But just to give you a 30-second quick recap of that, in the first seal, we saw the Antichrist uh, being revealed. And this all ties in with Matthew 24, and I'll show you that in a minute. In the second seal, we saw a world war. In the third seal, we see economic collapse. In the fourth seal, we see famine, hunger, pestilence, and death. In the fifth seal, we see the martyred saints of the tribulation. And in the sixth seal is when we see a great earthquake and the sun and moon being darkened. And that's what we just saw in, in, in Matthew 24, 29 through 31, the sun being darkened, right? We see also that in the sixth seal in Revelation, and that's all covered in Revelation 6 with the opening of the first six seals. Now, Revelation 7 is the sealing of the 144,000 and a great multitude 
in heaven, which the angel tells John, are those who came out of the great tribulation. And so that's covered in that sermon I did or that short message I did on the opening of the six seals. And just simply reading all of this chronologically, we see that the first five seals are opened. And then the sixth seal reveals the sun and moon being darkened. And then the rapture occurs after that in Revelation 7. Then the seventh seal is the opening of the trumpet judgments and the wrath of God after the tribulation. So why is that relevant? Because here again, going back just really quick to Matthew 24, uh, 29, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days. Okay, so after the tribulation is, is when it says, you know, the sun and the moon will be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. Powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then, see, there's a then statement. And then after that shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And it goes on and talks about the rapture when he gathers together his elect from the four winds in verse 31. So in order to understand the timing or the chronology of the rapture, all we have to do is study and compare side by side Matthew 24 with Revelation 6 and the opening of the six seals and simply read it literally, chronologically, in the order that it's written. God's word isn't meant to be confusing. Revelation is a revelation. It's a revealing where it's not supposed to be a mystery or hidden. God wrote the book of Revelation for us to understand and to know when these things shall be. So all we have to do, we, we have the rapture there in verse 31 of Matthew 24. So all we have to do is go back now and go backwards and see what happens before the rapture. Okay, um, and that, that'll tell us the sequence of events. So going back to Matthew 24, and I encourage you to open up your Bibles and, and read along with me. And we see that, you know, he tells, they ask him in verse 3, when will these things come to pass? And in verse 4 of Matthew 24, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So first we're going to have wars and rumors of wars, which we do hear about right now. Um, and then we're going to have in verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, notice in the second seal of Revelation 6 that we covered, what was the second seal? It was war. It was the red horse riding in, bringing war after the first seal when the Antichrist comes on the scene. So the order is, is the same here in Matthew 24. Jesus says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and then in verse 7, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That's a world war. At this point in Matthew 24, we are in uh, that, that second seal. You know, once, once we see world war uh, in today's age, that'll be it. That'll be the sign that there's no question that the tribulation period has begun. Okay, and then uh, Jesus says in verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. What does that mean? This is the beginning of the tribulation period, that seven-year tribulation. This is going to be the first three and a half years, that first part of it. We get that from Daniel. We'll cover that in other videos. But we see in verse 9, it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Okay, and they shall... And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. So has the rapture occurred at this point? Okay, what, what are we seeing? We're seeing a world war. And then we're seeing, you know, people betraying one another. And we see martyred saints. We see saints being killed. 
and you know they'll deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. So the rapture hasn't occurred. We're only on verse 9. Remember, the tribulation, it's a, after the tribulation in verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days. It comes out right and just says it. And it's verse 31 where the rapture occurs in Matthew 24. So we're not there yet. But Jesus is describing the persecution during the tribulation period when that world war uh, begins. <clears throat> and then it says in verse 11, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many, in verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, a lot of people have confusion about what that means, enduring to the end. Is it talking about saving faith? I think it's talking about being saved out of the tribulation period. He who endures unto the end of the tribulation will be saved out of the tribulation because he'll be raptured. Okay, it's the people that live off the grid, they don't take the mark, and they simply survive uh, during that tribulation period until the return of Jesus, though many will be martyred. Verse 14, in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes, and woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation. There it is. There shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Okay, so notice here, you know, first there's the world war, then we're hated and killed, haven't been raptured yet. And then it says, we'll see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. So we're going to see the rise of the Antichrist. We're not going to be raptured before the Antichrist uh, stands in the third, you know, newly constructed temple in Jerusalem that they're constructing right now. Uh, all the parts are ready. They just have to assemble it. Um, they've got the red heifer that they need to for the purification of the temple and the priests and the holy vessels. So they've got all that right now. It's just a matter of time before they put that up and the Antichrist stands in the temple. And it says that we'll see him. That's only in verse 15. And so once we see him, it says in verse 15, rise up, then, you know, people in Jerusalem will flee into the mountains, those who are in Judea. And then in verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation. So once the Antichrist rises up, we get into the period of history, of world history known as the great tribulation. So you have the tribulation, which is the beginning of sorrows, which, you know, will be persecuted and killed and people will hate us and all this stuff. And then once the Antichrist is publicly revealed, then that'll usher in the great tribulation period where he's going to cause those who, you know, uh, everyone to basically take a mark on their hand or forehead uh, so that you can't buy or sell unless you have his mark. That'll be the start of the great tribulation period. And in verse 22, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The great tribulation period will be shortened for our sake. I don't believe it's going to be the full seven years because it says those days shall be shortened. Okay, so at that point, um, we're going to get close, we're close to being raptured. In verse 23, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now we get to verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Okay, so it's after the tribulation that we will be raptured. We're going to see the rise of the Antichrist. We're going to see the world wars. We're going to see the persecutions and the martyrdom. And then it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so it's literal it's chronological it's listed in order all you have to do is read matthew 24 or luke 21 or mark 13 chronologically and you'll see exactly that it's it's very clear that you know it's after the tribulation and the bible you know is very clear on that because again when you when you line that up with revelation 6 and the sixth seal you see that it's it's after the war it's after the famines it's after the plagues it's after the earthquakes it's after the martyrs in in you know in the fifth seal uh, that are martyred for their testimony is what it says. And then it's the sixth seal that brings about the, the sun being blackened, you know, and, and the moon being turned to blood and, and all of that before the return of Jesus Christ and the rapture of the church. So read chronologically, Matthew 24, Revelation 6 line up perfectly. Revelation 7 after that is the rapture, the second half of Revelation 7. And then Revelation 8 begins the trumpet judgments of God, which is the wrath of God. Now, don't be confused because the church is not appointed unto wrath. And one reason why people confuse this is because they think that the tribulation is the wrath of God when it's not. The tribulation can more accurately be called the wrath of the Antichrist or the wrath of Satan as he brings that persecution and martyrdom to the saints and to the whole world. He's going to destroy. He hates everybody, not just the church. He hates everyone, but especially the church. And so we're going to see that. Uh, whether it's our generation or whether it's a future generation, the church will be here for that. And we see that throughout the Bible, all, all throughout. You know, the word tribulation appears 25 times in the King James Bible. And in most of those instances, it's applied to the church. It's an admonition to the church telling us that we will go through tribulation. So I'll end with this, John 16, 1 through 4. We see this everywhere. Okay, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. But Jesus is saying that he's telling us this now so that when it happens, we won't be offended. We won't be like, why, God? Why is this happening? I thought we we're going to be raptured. You know, No, we're going to go through the tribulation. Okay, and so he says in verse 3, and these things will they do unto you. They're going to be doing this to us. We're not, we are going to be here because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. So he's saying, you know, I want you to remember that when these things happen, know that I love you. I'm with you. I've told you about these things. I've warned you about them. So when they come, you won't fall away thinking I've abandoned you because it's going to be a very, very dark time. And that's why it's important, you know, whether, again, whether you're pre-trip or post-trip, you're welcome in our church. And we can have those friendly discussions about it. But we have to be prepared to change our mind when our ideas and our beliefs and our teachings that we've received from other pastors in the past and other churches that are not lined up with scripture on this uh, are, not in, are not in line with scripture. We need to line up our views with scripture. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 3, 4. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass. And ye you know, that's the Apostle Paul 
saying we are going to suffer tribulation. Acts 14.22, it's all throughout the Bible, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Romans 5.3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Romans 8.35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Second, Second Thessalonians 1, 4, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. See, the church is appointed unto trouble and tribulation. That's what tribulation means, is trouble or great trouble. We're just not appointed unto wrath. Okay, but again, God's wrath is different than the tribulation period. God's wrath comes in Revelation 8 at the trumpet judgments, and then later in Revelation 16 in the vile judgments it's 8 through 11 and then also in, in 16 or 8 through 10 and then 16 the trumpet and vile judgments that's the wrath of god we won't be here for that but we will be here for the tribulation revelation 1 9 i john who also am your brother and companion in tribulation the apostle john in the book of revelation says you know talks about tribulation he's our companion in tribulation because the church whether in the last days or in the beginning has always endured through tribulation and scripture according to the bible there's no reason to think that we won't go through tribulation in the last days um, because of of you know false teaching that you may have gotten on this. You know, we have to line up with Scripture. Even in the book of Deuteronomy, way back in the Old Testament, chapter 4, when thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them because he'll rapture us out of the tribulation. So it's after the tribulation, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun and moon be darkened in a you know, sign of the Son of Man, and we'll be gathered together uh, from the four winds. So uh, take that to heart. Um, you know, we will endure through the tribulation, and I just pray, you know, whether it's our generation or not, that God strengthens us for it, and prepares us and uh, sends to stations as angels around us and, and his Holy Spirit, most of all and most importantly, so that we can, we can endure. So um, with that, uh, that'll be it for today. But I'm going to next time I'll be doing a video on the trumpet judgments and the wrath of God to kind of close out this three video series between the six seals We'll cover, you know, and I covered Matthew 24 in the Olivet Discourse. And then I'll cover uh, the seventh seal, which ushers in the judgment of God. So until then, uh, be blessed and the Lord Jesus bless you.